Being human, do you ever wonder what makes us who we are? Our habits, preferences, or where we came from? We are expressing ourselves in thousands of ways every day through our choices. Let's have a conversation with people who are having interesting lives. My name is Alan Walker. I'm a doctor of chiropractic and a human being. Uh, welcome to episode eight of Being Human. I've got a very good friend of mine um, with me today, Johnny Standing. And uh, Johnny is someone I met, uh, it would be way back last year for the first time. Um, I met him and, and his uh, partner, Caroline. Uh, we were on a retreat um, in Wales, which was a really wonderful time, actually. It was a great experience for me, and it was a, a, something that I don't think I was with the right people to experience uh, time away. I can't explain too many of the details, but it was absolutely amazing. Meditation and the people there were, were, were something else. And obviously, like I said, two of the people I met there was Caroline and Johnny, and they really made uh, my experience a thousand times better and that we've become great friends um so i brought johnny with us today and johnny um i would like to say that you you live in cumbria but you don't live in cumbria right now do you, you you've had a little bit of a move around and uh, you i'd like you to talk to me a little bit about that and also um why you're moving around uh where were you originally from i'm originally from oh, i was born in stockport um I was there for the first five, six years of my life. Then we moved to a little place called uh, Hart Green, which is uh, near Marple, which was a nice little village at the time. And I went to school in primary school there and secondary school there. Right, okay, you've got brothers and sisters? Uh, no, I have two stepsisters. I only ever met one of them. The other one I never met. That was on my dad's side. Uh, and I don't think they're alive now. So no, I'm pretty much an only child, I think, really. An only child, yeah, okay. Yeah. And do you have any family of your, your own? I do, yeah. I have uh, a daughter and a son, and my daughter's given us like three grandchildren. Oldest is 20, and the other one's 13, the other 11. Yeah. So it's two girls and one boy. Yeah, yeah interesting time bringing up a, a family. What were you I mean, just going straight in and asking about your parents? You know, what sort of work did they do? And right, do you know right. anything funny about how they how they met? I didn't know how they met so much really, but um, yeah, they. my mum was wonderful. Uh, she was just a very happy, jolly person in herself. I'd say like 100% of the time, mostly, it's, you know, except the, 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 the strange thing is they were chalk and cheese Whereas my mum was uh, always happy singing, you know, like my dad wasn't, he was quite stern, pretty stonish, like, you know, he's, uh, he was in the RAF. He was a tool maker. My mum didn't have any really skilled jobs. She worked in factories when she was young. Uh, except when I was born, she didn't go back to work till I was seven. But my dad was in the RAF for 15 years. He was a sergeant in that. And then he went into management and engineering. Um, and he actually became a Freemason as well. Uh, he, he didn't know much about it. He just liked that idea of dressing up in the suit and having the, you know, the big shot sort of playing the big shot. That was what it is, really. Don't blame him. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> no, he couldn't tell him much about it, even if he wanted to, and he wouldn't. But it, it wasn't high up in that or anything, you know. Anything like that? You like that in you? You know, you. No, no, nothing like no, that. I know I would, that. I'd, I'd steer I know clear that. of all of that. I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What sort of things, have, you know, as you grew up, what sort of uh, things, did you, where did you move to? Where did you live? Where did you sort of, how many times have you moved around in, in your early years? Right, like I said, I moved from, it was about five or six. I'd done about six months in a school in Offerton in Stockport, which I don't remember much of because it was only just a small period of time, but then moved to uh, Hart Green and went to an All Saints primary school there, which was, pretty cool I liked the primary school you're only young you don't really think of that much but when I went to secondary school it was uh, tough for one thing in its five-year history it it had no girls in it and in that five years I was in that and it, there wasn't many people wearing a uniform past the second year and it was it, it was um, a lot of greaser types and skinhead type things it was rough and the school was uh, so like the 80s it, no, no, this is it. I, I started that one in 1969 mm -hmm. and I'd left by the time I was 74, in 1974 right. I was working. So basically that that was 
it was a tough time. It was just brutal compared to primary school, which I think a lot of people would find it, but this was particularly like that, especially since the teachers caned you a lot as well, which is- I do remember that myself. It. Yeah, no, we I got caned a lot, hands, backside, yeah. and straps and things like this. So it was, it was pretty brutal. I didn't learn anything really other than, I mean, I didn't really revise for English, but I managed to get an O level in English literature and one in language. The rest of it didn't really. It is come interesting, in. isn't it, to look back at those days, and we sort of um, we don't often think about it when we do stop at a conversation like this. And we mm. go, "Wow, you know, um, I had the cane, yeah. I had the belt, yeah. I had the slipper, yeah. you know." And uh, these days, you know, children seem to be uh, they're getting the same type of education as what I had, and yet they're not getting any of that brutality. Well, they don't need it. It's not necessary, was it? It wasn't necessary. Yeah, interesting times, eh? Yeah, very. We had a, yeah. a, a different sort of brutality now to what there is then. We, we have it from a, in, a, in a different way, I think. But the, the but not at school. Mm. At, at school these days, it's my, I look upon it as being uh, better, less brutal. Hopefully, not no brutality at all. And uh, we get the brutality as an adult, perhaps with mm. the lack of freedom. But we we'll perhaps talk about that later. Yeah. Um, what sort of work did you do when you when you left school? Right. So I started work when I was 15 and I was a, a welder fabricator engineer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did my time doing that. Um, it was all very well having that skill because you know, you got to have something to fall back on. That was the thing that I'd get off my dad with him being a tool maker. So he'd set me that job up. I actually wanted to be a carpenter, but no, yeah, 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 <laughs> that yeah. wasn't going to happen. Anyway, <clears throat> after I'd been in that some time, what happens is that despite the fact that you've gone through your apprenticeship, the contracts that are coming in were always the same thing. So you were making 35,000 of one product and I got fed up. I left it. I uh, went on a building site for six months and had a bit of a laugh, but my dad didn't like that. So it was get back into engineering, you know, so I did. I went back into that different engineering uh, company, exactly the same thing. I was just making thousands of the same product. What sort of products were you making? Well, in the in the first instance, uh, it was a it was a, a metal spinning company. The first one I worked for, which is cutting circular shapes out, putting them on a lathe, and a guy had folded it over into a bowl mm -hmm. shape. But on my side, I was making um, guards for machinery, which was, which is a good job. I enjoyed doing that, but. We also worked for a company called Hazel Grove Music and they made pool tables. So at the time, as you can imagine in the seventies, I made, so if I made 35,000 pool table corners, which starts with a, <laughs> a seven foot sheet of steel, <laughs> you chop that into strips, then into squares, then you go on and put it on a fly press. And at the time it was a hand punch. It was, it was not automated like that. So you'd that and then you'd fold it on a folding machine, which is yeah. all done automated now. And then uh, you'd have a little piece that you welded in so you do that so there's thirty five thousand of them but then i had to brace three screws on the inside of each so did you sort of have a favorite triple. part of what you were doing because i've done a similar type of job myself and yeah. it was like well i'm looking for get this done get this done I, my favorite bit would be this and i'd yeah. imagine it'd be like something like the folding or the drilling holes or something like that you know or the welding no the welding well my favorite part of it is when a, a decent job had come in and you'd get the blueprint there and it was it was folding a large piece of steel uh, and it had all kinds of little shapes in it and you have to drill holes in it and then you'd weld that up and it'd fit perfectly onto some machine. So you've got to get it right. And that was very enjoyable. I didn't mind doing that. The time went quicker, but when you're doing the same thing, you just stood brazing three screws on and then and then the next is in and it's in a jig and you're at it. No, yeah, your mind's off somewhere else. And uh, it, no, it just become a drag. Yeah. So yeah, I, I mean, I, it's interesting talking to you about these bits first, yeah. because they, uh, they sort of, it's a big jump between the next bit, which is who, who you are, where, how you got to and what sort of person you are today with, mm. uh, as far as spirituality is concerned, right. well, because you are the most spiritual person I think I've ever met in my life. Really? Thank you. Yeah. Oh, thanks and, for and inviting it's, me on it, by the way. No, it's an, it's an absolute, it's an absolute pleasure. It's the, um, I think we just went straight on to what I want to talk about today. Then I think it would be, uh, it's too big a jump. It's good to yeah. know who the person is first and go, yeah. Yeah, I can relate to that. I can relate yeah. to that. I can relate to this. Yeah. So you, uh, you've been a welder for a lot of your life and then 
and and what sort of belief systems did you have you know, throughout well, your life? I haven't been a welder for a lot of my life because I, once I'd left it, I went full time as a musician for seven years. Okay. Uh, what sort of things were you playing? Uh, I was in rock bands mainly. I was a drummer at okay. the time. Uh, I mean, I play guitar and I was singer, songwriter things, and I had my own little studio so we moved. But yeah, uh, that was great fun. It was rather hedonistic at times, but yeah. it was good fun. Uh, and and again, I said real rock and roll. Oh yeah, real stuff. Yeah, yeah. There's some funny stories when you first do it, but um, later on, it, that became a drag as well because once you've been driving up and down the country in the back of a van or in the front of a van, and you're not getting paid what you think you're going to get paid, it just become it, it, one thing. One things run to a monotonous level. That's it, really. Sounds Time like for most change. people's life, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Time for doing. change. So I moved into landscaping after that, and I've never looked back. Really, I like being outside, and I've also done some roading work as well, which was interesting. Mm. Hard work, but great, interesting. So as, as far as you know, working uh, as a musician and travelling around. What was your, you know, what was your belief system during during that time? You know, right, did well, you just getting by, or did you have, did you have a, were you did, first pick up spirituality? When did it start? When did this right, change for you start? Right, that's a really good question, uh, and I like it because it's really fixed in my mind. I was twenty two, when suddenly I, I started asking my questions: Why am I here? What is this all about? You know what's the meaning of life all these little, little questions and so i went on uh, like what they call a seeking mission you know i went looking at different cults and religions and philosophies and things like that and i started reading a lot um but i did i decided to go inside some of these groups to experience it for real rather than just read up on it so that i could have the experience of what it was like to be in those groups so I, I went into an Hare Krishna thing for a little bit didn't particularly gel with that as how much. did you catch up with those what was the well mean? there was one in um, Stockport so, so you just I, happened to know there was a there was I just a walked Krishna, in I walked yeah, in asked there. them went to the meeting started to join in with them a little bit but it wasn't for me I went to another place called uh, Life Wave which was Ishtar's journey to enlightenment which was uh, you'd pay £40 for the mantra, then £80 for the second, then 160 for the third, and this went on and on. So the, the last mantra was, would make you enlightened and you'd be co coughing up something like four grand for it. Mm. I didn't get to the 80 quid one before I realised that was just a total rip off. You know, and I did ask questions and the, the silly, silly answers that I got, like I said, if you really want to help people become spiritual, why aren't you doing it for free? And the answer I got off a of so-called enlightened being, which obviously wasn't, was if you need clothes, you've got to go to Marks and Spencers and buy them. Well, you can clothe yourself in spirituality without having to do all of that or, or you know, exploit anybody. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. no, I'd stayed away from anyone that was going to exploit others. So in the end... Hasn't the church been doing that? Well, you know? yeah, yeah, well, I could go on forever about that because the Bible was one of the big ones. I went into a lot of Christian groups and uh, I studied the Bible inside and out. Well, I thought I had, but there are hidden codes in that thing. And I have, have a really, really good friend that I work with now, doing a podcast of our own. Uh, Who's that? Who are you doing that with? Uh, Carly Spell. Yeah. And she's a, an ex-lawyer and she teaches the law, but the legalese language and the root meaning of it and the etymology and things. And she's she really knows the running she does well, but she also likes the... Um, spiritual side of life and we both do a podcast together which is trying to pull at the thread or the fabric of a lot of these things because there's a lot of uh, spiritual knowledge or esoteric knowledge which means secret really basic secret knowledge uh, now we're not saying we know anything but we do uh, speculate on it and we allow people to say whatever they like without without Freedom making any judgment of it yeah absolutely yeah quite that's it but and and some of the things that the way people conduct their lives as a spiritual human or a person is uh, quite remarkable. I have met, on the other hand, people who class themselves as spiritual as being kind of like, I wouldn't say, I don't, I say, I don't want to sound too judgy, but the judging themselves, they, they tend to 
have an air of superiority about them when it comes to something spiritual. I, I can spot that easily now, quite easily. So, I mean, only based upon experience. Yes, yeah. yeah. Well, you're not a kid anymore, are you? No, you know? no, I'm a long shot off that. That's another but, thing, isn't it? Yeah, uh, how old are you now? 65. Wow, you look good for 65, I will yeah, say that. Yeah, that's because I love you're my doing wife, good she's a lot younger than me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, keep it young, I like yeah, that, yeah, I yeah, like yeah. that. Yes, so the, uh, the the Krishnas, and you went on to another group, what was that group called? Uh, Ishvara's Journey to Enlightenment. I went into a few different Christian groups, I had, had um, studies with them and things like that, and read things about it myself, but the one that hit home eventually, by the time I was about 25, was Buddhism. It didn't require any blind faith and it didn't require any, um, you know, like there's no commandments on it. There was precepts for sure, but it was always up to you and the, the behaviour was looked upon as either being skillful or unskillful, which I quite like, you know. There's, there's, experience there's, or unexperienced. Well, it keeps the guilt out of it. Yeah. And it keeps the, and you can keep your self-respect and learn how to respect others in a reasonable way rather than there's a lot of things happen with people where they become very judgy within their own little group and anyone outside of it especially a lot of christian groups are seen as wicked or you know not not moral enough to uh, be in that group if you see what i mean and how do you sort of live you know what does it mean to you to be in your in your own personal spirituality how do you live that life how do you you know how do you you, you wake up in the morning you know what, what what has it done if we went back last year how did you live last year like in this way did you work well i was, I, yeah, I was landscaping i was living yeah. in the lake district uh, we had our own house and had a little recording studio in it studio in there but uh, i was uh, landscaping on a ten and a half acre site absolutely beautiful place waterfalls going through it lovely woodlands and all the rest in, of it. in Cumbria yeah yeah it was in Grasmere actually mm -hmm. and then he also worked in and around Grasmere for another fella doing the world landscape. of hobbits oh yeah yeah <laughs> all, the, all the little people too yeah <laughs> yeah no no uh, the what was I doing last year I was uh, writing music recording music and working landscaping and it is, it's, it's about a year now, we sold the house, bought a camper van. Um, well, it's not a camper van, it's a motorhome. What motor sort of spiritual home, journey one. were you doing with that to make the decision to, to sell your house? Right, and... yeah, that's, that's the thing. That's because of the changing times, we were looking to go self-sufficient. It's not so much the spiritual side of it, although that is part of it. But uh, my wife's always wanted to do it. Um, and I've always thought it'd be a good idea to, to you know, to be more self-sufficient in the sense that you could grow your own food, you know what's in it, uh, and not be told what to do. Now you can't really get completely 100% out of the system and they're making it harder and harder to do that. But um, yeah, we wanted to be as self-sufficient as we possibly could and we're still searching. And there's a lot of new laws come out now where they're making that difficult. That's so what were you looking to do? You know, we, we, you just be self-sufficient. You sold your house? Yeah. You bought a, a van? A yeah, motorhome, yeah. Motorhome? Yeah. So that a big was one. a. Yeah, a big and, one. and the house you had was a, was a two bedroom, three no, bedroom? No, it is a three bedroom house uh, with four floors, including a cellar. Yeah. It was an old Victorian semi. Yeah. Uh, I've actually been there and it, yeah, it was yeah, beautiful. Yeah, and, yeah. It, you know, I love the way what you've done with it. It, yeah. it was very, very homely. Yeah. But the mo to move from there into, into a motorhome. Yeah. Uh, it's quite a big, a big, a big step, you know, and it's not the normal step that people have. They they don't make them decisions. This isn't this isn't a normal direction. This is an unusual direction for a, a someone, a British person, to make in this country, working a job. Yeah. And both of you are working at the time. You yeah. made a decision to go. No, we're doing something different. Let's um, mm. uh, let's go on holiday to Ibiza instead of going to Mallorca. You know, this yeah. is. This was big. This is like let's sell the house, yeah. and didn't uh, go. Didn't suddenly take the house back off the market. And go no, that was a bad idea. Sold yeah. the house. Yeah. Put the money in the bank. Yeah. Used some of it to buy a motorhome. Yeah. Got rid of all your belongings. Yeah. No, it's a big deal. It's yeah. a, it's a huge thing, and and I don't know anyone else who's done it. No. You hear about people that do it, but yeah. I've never actually met met someone until until you two. Right. And it's. Uh, this is this is why I wanted to get you on here and okay. to delve into yeah, these, right. these 
this the original idea and and why you would do this and and how you live a life of spirituality in a much smaller place i mean it sounds like you've become the nearest thing to weird monks mm. that i that i know <laughs> you know uh -huh. how has the last 12 months been living in the home and and the people that you spend your time with you know how do you how do you choose where you spend your days where have you been what have you been well most what have you been preaching man right well i haven't really been preaching anything um uh, but we have been traveling a lot we've been up and down the uk we've done all the nc500 in scotland right around the west so that, coast that's the coast the, yeah the right, coastal right around and inland you know as well all these different places looking at properties and first and foremost, I, I, it, I like to be as honest with myself as I possibly can. So that's what I'd like to do here, to be authentic about it. I, it's definitely not for everybody. There are difficult times in it, but you have to know what you're made of to do it. And I have to admit that um, at one point I did regret it. I don't well, know. So you're buying a van to travel to find to find somewhere yeah we're still doing it we're not we're there, but we're all right we're, we're what sort of thing we're looking for the we're the house or? Been great. well well with a bit of land and, and a, a house to either do up or move into yeah so this because we were lucky enough to i didn't have a mortgage you see so i'd sold that outright so that's that made that easier you followed the system had you yeah 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 <laughs> no bought, but it's not it's been really interesting i mean all the way up to scotland we went on the isle of harris lewis looking at properties none of them were like the description that was given by any estate agent afterward one of them was uh right up in the islands up near uh, wick which uh, everywhere we went apart from when you got up to wick uh, i don't mean to offend anyone who lives in wick but it was it was a uh, rather run down place uh bleak and we went up up into the hills there to look at this property that was supposed to have a brand new roof on it windproof waterproof and the flipping gable end was hanging off it when we and it's a long way to go to look at something that is that's not, not descriptive you know it doesn't <laughs> it's not as it was described so yeah that was a toughie but all the same it was good fun going the highlands are gorgeous and it was just lovely traveling around anyway how long did it take to get there it was a boat trip or was it it's actually in the highlands itself well yeah there was a two hour one to the isle of uh lewis yeah yeah and uh, we traveled around then because it was a ferry you know a car ferry right traveled around that and the isle of harris is the same island but they they've nick changed it when you go down south the Isle of Lewis is up the top and the Isle of Harris is at the bottom, but it's the same island. I don't know why they do that. I don't know, but they are completely different. The top end up in Lewis was just like bogland and the bottom was all just rocky. And, um, See, th I think mo most English people have never travelled up that no. far. They, you know, they, they've, well, uh, they've probably been lucky if they've found something in a magazine and had a yeah. few, flipped through a few pages and looked at a few photographs. It's, yeah. And I haven't been up there, up there right. either. I have been to some islands, off islands, off Scotland. But, yeah. uh, and I, I, I lived, lived on one for, I think it was yeah. three weeks, yeah. um, for a bit of a laugh. But uh, further north, I've not, I've not done this. Well, you've just reminded me, actually, because the, the question you were asking me, why did we do it? Because we'd planned it for three years. Okay. But I used to live in Ireland. I lived there for about six years in Ireland. And um, when I met my wife, we decided that we wanted to go self-sufficient. So we planned it for ages. And this is, we were living in the Peak District then. And uh, so we... we uh, Whereabouts on the peaks? Right. Well, that was in. It was near a little place called Hayfield. It's Kinder Scouts, the start of the Pennine Way. Oh, beautiful! Way yeah, there, yeah, 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 yeah. So we sold sold that, and we'd had these plans for three years to move to Ireland because the property was cheap, and you could get quite a number of acres to work on and with. And we were really looking forward to it, but then the uh, pandemic came, and there was lockdowns, and we sold the house, and we couldn't go so we had a bit of a, a, a panic on so caroline my wife she got up at four o'clock one morning it was only about not long to go really and uh found this victorian semi up in appleby in the eden valley uh which was which is it was just gorgeous all around it you know it's right up near the uh, yorkshire dales all the lakes you know all that all it's surrounded by all that and the eden valley itself so it was a lovely place 
Um, so, so we did that and it was like last minute. So that's how that came about that we moved up there. Uh, and obviously our plan was our plan to go self-sufficient had gone because we had to move during a lockdown yeah and we had to okay. do that so that's how that happened what whereabouts are you doing at the moment you're stopping in uh, in in the motorhome uh, in uh daventry yeah uh, while, uh, while you're visiting me but the uh, what's what's direction what's happened over the last month where have you been over the last month god blimey uh mainly the west wales mid wales north wales mainly all over wales looking at places i've been looking at some churches been looking at a lot of land i've been looking at some houses and um, and we're being really fussy <laughs> you know it's got it's got a, yeah this is it one of those and, and and things have changed on that front as well a lot of it's auction now as well online auction so you can't just go in and, and uh, say okay we'll buy that you know will you accept this there's these auctions so there's a lot of that and you have to put in deposits and what have you before you can get on to the auction and things like this but <clears throat> no it's fair enough i suppose but that's what we're having to do but we are enjoying um meeting lots of other people and there's a lot of friends of ours that have been with us for instance we've been to i think it's about three festivals which ones uh, it was the the time to rise one was the last one we were at and before that the shine seminars oh and i think we missed we did miss one as well it was uh, the gold camping one mm -hmm. but the friends that we were with they went on what sort of uh, you know what happens at these festivals what, what times well are? there's a lot there's a lot of music obviously but it's there's a lot of talks as well like on our podcast on our third podcast we've um we had laura eisenhower on you know dwight eisenhower was great granddaughter uh she she had a lot of interesting Dwight things to say Eisenhower. it was his american president and it was in the 40s 50s mm -hmm. yeah, from there he was the one that gave a speech about the um the uh what's what's i'm gonna say goodness me <laughs> yeah it's the military industrial complex that's what mm -hmm. it was yeah he gave that which was a quite an unusual speech to give I'm already right saying that on YouTube we've got one of them uh, talks mm. on there that talk that that breaks down mm. that talk yeah. into a cartoon type of spread. I think yeah. oh, that's what I've seen. Mm. Do you know what I'm talking about? Where they they do a, 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 yeah, a drawing so. yeah. bit by bit as the yeah. talk goes on, and it's quite cleverly done, very watchable. Yeah, yes. yeah. No, no. It was uh, so we've had interesting people like that, and uh, I don't know if I'm changing the subject somewhat, but all the same, there's some of the other guests. Uh, have been spiritual or they they, um, they have a view on things like we've had a guy on there called Tony Sayers his views are completely different to another guy that was on there called Jim McCarty who's who's um, ascribing the law of one we won't get into it because it, it it's five books long that mm -hmm. and, and it was it was we haven't uh, got that much no no today. no it's another thing altogether but anyway you know we have the these... definition what, what's basically that but what's the content of those five books briefly right briefly is it's an impossibility that alan okay the, the, the first book <laughs> well no no it's all five it's what what it is is it, it was a, a channeling thing but as soon as i heard that i went oh no not that not channeling i wouldn't follow that but when i read the material it was uh it was three people and uh, Jib was describing it and one another chap was the uh, questioner and there was a lady that was being channeled in it, and it went on over four years and they spoke to uh, what was called a social memory complex of beings that used to live believe it or not already saying the word this is going to make people laugh I know it's, it's a, a two billion years ago on Venus when it was an inhabitable planet but the social memory complex is what's his left you, it says that you move up in density as beings in the universe so and we're in what's called a th fourth density human beings animals are like in a third density and plants are like a second density all living beings because what it's saying is that the all life comes from one single source a creator and you, you'll find parallels like this and so it's experiencing itself subjectively but we are all one really it wouldn't look like that because there's a lot of uh, division but then 
there's there's this thing called the veil of forgetting that has been put in there. This is why you can't remember if there was any past or previous lives. Now, I actually had a lot of arguments in that. I could say that was quite convenient because no one can remember it, but some people claim that they do. It's not going to be easy for me to just briefly describe a no, lot I of think, that stuff. I think you've done a good, a good yeah. job there, actually. You've done a good job. Yeah. It's because yeah. uh, I want to sort of have you open up a little bit about that mm. because it helps people understand that there is... Um, lots of different cultures yeah. in this country and in other countries that are following a different path yeah. besides the one they're following at the moment which is uh, waking up with an alarm grabbing something to eat yeah. getting the kids to school yeah. trying to get to work on time mm. being told what to do finishing doing that moving on to the next thing which would be probably lunch back to work jump in the car yeah. drive home listen to the radio yeah and it's it's a bit of a circle, a bit of a cycle, and I'm not so sure that it's it's necessarily the right one. And I, neither am I sure which is the right one at the moment. Right. I just see a lot of people following, going round that wheel that we're all aware of. Yeah. This, this. Well, that description is is describing the lifestyle that you uh, has been created for you in society, and uh, it's come come about over many many years and wars being fought was actually to do it when in my childhood i had a lot of freedom there was no cameras no computers and no phones and i could wander miles away from home i never even heard the word paedophile till i was in my 30s i'd never i didn't even know what one was yeah and, that, and then they start putting that into the psyche because there's a lot of this stuff is not being brought up and comes out of it but the freedom was incredible and when you've experienced freedom at that level and you make a comparison to children that are being brought up now where they don't even really it seems and appears to be free to some de to, to some degree but in actual fact you, you like you've just described the nine to five you're getting up the repetitive cyclic behavior where there's no real creativity in it in order for that to do it you have to go and get a degree somewhere so you, you've got your your schooling your primary and your secondary school and then you've got your colleges and your universities and that is a, is a piece of paper to describe what you do you've done it yourself you've had to do it but in your case it's service to others you are benefiting somebody there is a right to do something where you're going to be creative when i think creativity is wonderful but i don't think you need um a degree in it i really don't i think you can you can teach each other that kind of thing i mean like is it because i did that i i've done you know, I've done You're music not allowed to teach people things if you haven't got a piece of paper. No. Nah. Well, this is what I'm saying. You're, you're this is what I'm saying. You can't, you know, these, these days we're, we're almost stopped well, basically, talking. I'm, I'm, it's I'm all wondering how much it. of this conversation we're having might have to be cut. Because I, I would not throw myself 30 grand in debt just to just to say, you know, I'm going to wear a Saturnian robe and a funny cap on my head. You know, what's that all about for a kickoff? It's the same when you go in a court, they wear dark clothes and wigs. I mean, and there's a lot of strange behavior going on so it was not before somebody judges somebody else's um maybe their belief system or their lifestyle you should think about all that because what you've accepted as normal if you really analyze it isn't because basically at the end of the day it's a system that is geared on making us all competitive and to get us around to what's the money and there's not enough room for everybody to go get a bit of paper and do what they want and you're not brought up in the same conditions in the same environment as everybody else and and so so basically you're going to have the have nots and what have you and I've, I've always despised the idea of anyone looking down upon anyone else because i do think that we're all one i do think that we're all equal i do think we have inalienable rights and i do think that we all have uh, those rights to express it and it's not the case in different parts of the world where you, you're growing up watching people starving to death and that's that's a problem that's in your face and you're not and it's quite easy then to just go well i'm all right then you know did they? those things had an effect on yeah. me they did on my we wife my wife's the same we're very daily, much the same on it yeah every day people are saying that to yeah. themselves yeah that's not that's not right but I'm mm. all right, I'll carry on. You know, it, there's nothing I can do about it. There's no. nothing I can do about it. Yeah. And now we're getting to the stage where we're not even allowed to talk about these sort of things to others because of how it might become across. I mean, let's just say, for example, we have someone that's in the papers on, on the news at the moment. Let's call him uh, R.B. Oh, for right. This, for this. Right. Okay. Um, somebody who has been uh, put into a trial by media yeah. for 
not and not found guilty in a court of law mm. that's the important thing mm. maybe that might happen yeah. but right now what's happening to somebody that could have been that could be me mm. that could be you being held up at the moment by uh the news tv radio papers magazines yeah for something which I haven't actually done. And no. everyone's saying, that's disgusting. Have you heard what Alan Walker did? Mm -hmm. That's incredible. I just, you know, it, uh, and I've heard people saying this. I've actually met people who have, if I, if I had a conversation with me and they've brought it up. No. I'm thinking he's not been found guilty of this. No. So, you know, it's, it's a very, uh, very worrying time at the moment where people are frightened to, and you know, he's, he's standing up for things that he believes in. It's, it's his opinion. Mm. Uh, maybe he's right, maybe he's wrong, but he has a he has a he has a view, and these are the things that people in in my my day, when I was a kid, mm. were able to <clears> talk <throat> about. And we were able to say whatever you wanted. At the one yeah. time you were able to down in London, there'd be places where orange boxes, the old fruit boxes that people could turn upside down and stand on, and start bellowing out their belief system of of something. Yeah. And these days you won't find those people now because no. we've got laws that says you can't say that anymore. Yeah, well, You're that, to speak your that's mind. very disturbing to me. Just taking the RB thing, um, anybody who's going to accuse somebody of somebody, something needs to go to the police. And uh, they didn't go to the media. The media went to them and they made a case against him because it seems to me that that looks like... We're talking about RB. Yes, yeah. well, it looks more like an agenda. I wouldn't presume for one moment to know what the guy did. But I do remember not liking him a lot when mm -hmm. he was a comedian years mm -hmm. ago because of his arrogance and his ego. And that, that's, your, that's, that's up to you to but believe I watched, it or not believe that. I watched him after he's come out of the Hollywood thing uh, change his life and basically married somebody that he loved, had two children, one on the way and all the rest of it, all normal, wasn't great, but turn spiritual, start meditating, get out of all the addictions that he had, talk about it freely and openly and helped others to do the same and all the while that he was even doing that with the people that are in certain movements uh, what I believe that they, they, they've got things right they were still classing him as a shill not forgiving him for any of that anyway and despite all that he carried on and, and did what he was, he was doing <clears throat> you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't <clears throat> I wouldn't I don't know what's going on it doesn't really it shouldn't be in my face either what I do know is, is what I'm hearing, what somebody says, it's what they're saying. And if you're going to determine whether that is honest or authentic enough, without them you know, worrying about it being a conspiracy theorist or a shill, you know, it's easy to throw mud at people and make things stick. But if they're good at what they do and they're doing it and people are listening to it, there must be a reason for that. And to try and shut that down and have an agenda to close it down. Because there's another person that was accused of uh, he and sex crimes just for revealing a truth you know I, i'm going to say his name out because i actually like the man and that's julian assange and that guy's still in in prison for what telling the truth he didn't even tell the truth he, he was given a piece of video and then put that out in the public and just this week we've, we've I've, I've heard uh, an american president again a press club with with journalists saying that journalism is very important and it should be a free press but it's not a free press because if it was then they wouldn't be throwing people in prison yeah, for that's telling that's the truth a, that's just a cover, that's just yeah, a cover. It's, it's, it's ludicrous so you, you know you're going to have to decide for yourself the times that you're living in and what you're doing with it mm -hmm. and how best to navigate your way around all this stuff and uh, for me my policy is to be as honest with myself as i possibly can because that's the nearest to my truth I'm ever going to get. But the other thing is, I look at everything through ethical eyes. If it's beneficial for me and it's beneficial for other people, that seems like a good and right thing to do in the sense that it's skillful as well. If, if I'm listening to people that are saying things that I know is going to be detrimental to somebody else and is harmful, then I'll avoid it because that's what I've learned to do. And it's not easy. I still behave like a turkey myself. I still make we're, mistakes. We're human. I still, you know, you know, it's, it's not absolutely. That's what being human is. I mean, you, you, nobody's perfect. There's all this judging and muslinging and what have you. And the media are really good at uh, like putting somebody on a trial like that because it does stick. Because people will do that. Oh, it, go, it, this is this you know is they'll ruined, believe it straight ruined, out. Now. Um, yeah, the gentleman we I mean, were talking if, about. Even if you went to court and was proven innocent. 
that's still a, that's smeared. had an adverse effect yeah. on the game. And, and actually, that example. court case won't, no. won't, wait, won't make front page news anyway. It's, no. it's going to be a very little interest to no. the people who, who make these decisions. Yeah. Now, I was interested in your, your opinion on, on this, very, yeah. very much so. So, at the moment, what you've got on for the this, bring it back to us to, right. to this, this time. Yeah. Um, sort of put that to bed a little bit yeah. um, be because I think not a combo in it yes yeah. I think there's a, another time we'll get together and see what the next stage is I think there's be plenty to talk about with, with that in, yeah. the, in the future yeah. um, how I get through through life when I see things that aren't going well is I can't help but um, my heart feels damaged by that situation that, that, that he's going through at the moment but when I feel, when I see things that aren't going right, the way I'm dealing with it these days is uh, through something that I read, which is to a certain extent, say it sounds wrong at first, but I try not to mind because humanity is the way it is mm -hmm. um, at the moment. Until it changes, it's the way it is. No. Try not to mind, but I do care. Beautiful. Yeah, try not to mind, but I do care. You do. And then try not to worry about it because there's some things I can do things with and some things I can't. And I think you know, doing a having a conversation with you about the way life's going at the moment, and with anyone who's going to listen to this, and uh, just to, to see what my opinion is with yeah. things, your opinion is with things, and perhaps make a better opinion themselves about what yeah. might be going on at the moment, so they're just a little bit more aware of perhaps what is right and what what's wrong but listen johnny it's, it's been fan fantastic having having you on here today and i know that we'll um we'll definitely bring you back and we'll find something else um where we probably won't have to be so coded about the words we're using and, and that <laughs> yeah. but no i've really i've really enjoyed it can't thank so you all right. for, thank for you very all much. The way up from, uh, from wales yesterday uh, in your van uh, on your route of uh, finding <laughs> your your new grass is green uh, the rainbow and, and uh, everything else uh, and i hope very much that you find somewhere very shortly thanks and set up your uh, a couple of acres and yeah, well, grow your cabbages and uh, your carrots and your onions and uh, wake up every morning to the sounds of birds and be uh, back in nature and uh, back in the place where you where you want to on this wonderful wonderful planet that we live on yeah that hopefully we will keep good uh, and um and bless us all yeah. so i hope you've enjoyed this uh this this podcast podcast eight um i know i've enjoyed doing it i've enjoyed speaking to you johnny can't say Thank it enough and maybe next time we yeah. speak to Car caroline as well um, so if you've, if you've enjoyed listening to this, then please like and share and I look forward to doing the next podcast.